All right, guys, May 5th, and we're going to still be looking at Chapter 12 in the Dog's Book. Today, instead of just drawing the Venn diagrams, we're going to be using them to try to determine some unknown numbers. So I've got three more examples to do with you today, um, and then we'll get you going. So on page 329, there's a, a problem that says science courses. It says a group of students, 12 are taking chemistry, 10 are taking physics. Uh, they're taking both, uh, three are taking both chemistry and physics, and five are neither taking neither chemistry nor physics. And then they want to ask, well, how many students are in the group altogether? Okay, and here's how a Venn diagram can help you with this scenario. So you've got your universal set, and it says a group of students, looks like they're taking chemistry and physics, and so we could talk about science courses. Okay, and there's two, two science courses that the kids are taking. They're taking chemistry and physics. Now, could these kids be taking both? Yeah, it sounds like through the reading they could be. So. We're going to draw a couple of circles that overlap here. We'll call one chem and we'll call one an abbreviation for physics. Okay? And then we're going to, I always kind of work backwards on these from the inside out. So if I go to the last thing that was stated here, it says five are taking neither chemistry nor physics. Okay? That puts me out here. They're not in any of those circles. The previous statement says that three are taking both chemistry and physics. That's that overlapping part, you guys. Okay? And then it says ten, ten are taking physics. Okay? Well, these three people are included in the ten that are taking physics. So that leaves me with seven left over out here. And it says twelve are taking chemistry. Again, I've already got three that are taking chemistry. Um, so I add another nine to get a total of twelve. Okay? Now, the ultimate question here. How many students are in the group? Well, now I have to add these numbers separately. So 7 and 3 is 10, plus 9 is 19, plus 5. 24 students are in that group completely. And our Venn diagram helped us organize that so we could determine what was going on. Okay? All right. Second example is on page 332. So if you guys would turn to 332. It says, in a poll of 46 students, 23 like rap music, 24 like rock music, 19 like country music, and then 12 like rap and country, 13 rap and rock, 14 country and rock, and nine liked all three. And they're asking me how many students did not like any of these types, okay? So we have to organize our information again. Okay, and so what do we have? We have uh, types of music. And this time we've got three circles. Okay, that last one is a terrible circle. Um, but that's okay. We have rock, we have rap, and we have country. Okay, and there I have all three of them overlap because it did say that some of them liked all three. And so we're going to take a look at where to go with this, starting at the end again. So it says, of those students, nine liked all three. That's going to be this spot right here. That's the part that's in all three circles at the same time. Prior to that statement, it said 14 liked country and rock. Well, this little piece here is what like is the country and rock. Nine are already in it. And since it said that um, 14 liked country and rock, then we've got to put five right here so that we would get a total of 14 in that area, okay? Prior to that, it says 13 liked rap and rock. Rap and rock is this area here, so 13, nine and four would give me 13. Prior to that, it says 12 liked rap and country. That's this one. So nine and three would give me 12, okay? If I go back one step from that, it says that 19 liked country. Well, in the country circle, I've already got 14, 17. I've got 17, so I need to add another 2 to get to 19. It says, like, 24 like rock, so I've got 18 already. Another 6 will give me 24. And then it says that 23 like rap, so 13, 16, 
plus another 7 would give me 23 in the wrap circle. Okay. Now the question ultimately is how many students do not like any of these? So what number would I put out here? At the very beginning it said we had 46 students that were asked these questions. So let's add these up. 10, 20, 34, 36. Okay. So if I have 36 already accounted for, okay, and I need 46, there must be 10 more outside of here that didn't like either of these three um, types of music. You know, maybe they're jazz people, I don't know, okay? All right, so that was another way to help us organize our information. One more example, you guys. We're gonna turn to page 335. Okay, and it says here, a manager of a baseball team looked over his roster at the beginning of spring training. He noticed the following facts. Every outfielder is a switch hitter. Half of all infielders are switch hitters. Half of all switch hitters are outfielders. And there are 14 infielders and eight outfielders. No infielder is an outfielder. How many switch hitters are neither outfielders nor infielders? Okay, so I've got, okay. My overall universal set here, you guys, is probably just going to be, excuse me, I'm having a hard time turning the page, the roster, okay, and inside the roster we've talked about switch hitters, okay, so I'll just use SH for switch hitter, and we talked about infielders and outfielders. Now it said that all outfielders are switch hitters, so we're going to put outfielders completely inside of the switch hitter circle. And it said half of the infielders are switch hitters. So I, I need these two to overlap. And these are going to be my infielders. Okay? All right, now I got to go back through and, and read some more information. So it says there are 14 infielders. Well, if half of them are switch hitters, then I've got seven in there, and I've got seven over here that are not. Um, they're infielders, but they're not switch hitters. Okay? It says they have eight outfielders. Okay. Half of all switch hitters are outfielders. So in the switch hitter circle, half of them or eight are switch are outfielders. Well, that means there needs to be eight that are switch hitters that aren't outfielders. And I've only got seven right now, so I need another one out here so that I've got the eight that I'm talking about. Okay. So how many switch hitters? So I'm in the switch hitter circle are neither outfielders nor infielders. That's this one person right here. You've got a switch hitter there that's not playing infield or outfield. So maybe they're a pitcher or catcher or something. Okay, and that's all I've got for you guys. So good luck. We'll see you again later in the week when we do our lab. Thanks.